Waitress serves old retiree man for years. One day he left her his keys and a note. No one else wanted the job, so a woman was forced to wait on a cantankerous old guy for years. He did, however, one day leave his key and a message stating something that made the woman cry. Okay, Jesse, given that you are the new female here, you must select table 13. When Jesse put her apron on to start her first day as a waitress at a nearby restaurant, her co-worker Mark warned her. Lunchtime was when people mostly came. Jessie, who had memorized as much as she could to begin her first day successfully, turned to table 13 and noticed an older guy slumped in his chair perusing the menu. Jessie said, perplexed, It's just an elderly man. Why is he such a nasty guy? Oh my, honey, he's awful. Therefore, be ready. No one here enjoys serving him, Mark stated while cockily cocking his head. I'm capable of handling anything, Jessie asserted. She erred in dismissing Mark's words out of hand, though. Mr. Norton, the man seated at the table, was a piece of work. Who are you? Ugh! When she came over with a smile, he laughed. Jesse here, which beverage will you consume today? She kept the smile on her face. You people frequently ask me if I usually have the same stuff. Iced tea, not too chilly or sweet, though. A straw, two lemon slices, the man mumbled, quiet and diggantly. Sure. Do you already have plans for lunch? Still not. Bring me my iced tea and leave now, he asked for it. Jessie raised an eyebrow, but she continued to walk away and place the iced tea order. It was rather straightforward, but the man protested. It was initially overly sweet before becoming too chilly. His lemon wedges lacked sufficient juice. Because it was now paper, his straw was fragile. By the fourth glass, Jessie had prepared. She murmured, trying not to lose her cool. Generation of softies and fools. Fine. The lasagna, please. After spitting, he launched the menu at her chest. Jessica had a smile on her face all the time. On her first day, she would not let the man ruin her mood. Yet there were numerous issues with the lasagna. In fact, she had to serve six families surrounding the older man since his table was taking so long to clear. Yep, yeah, we apologize. Yet someone needs to handle him, he chuckled. Jessica nevertheless refused to let one dissatisfied client ruin her. She was acting in her best interests. Her husband, Bob, worked erratic hours to support their family of five. She finally returned to the workforce in an effort to better serve herself for them because it was not enough. Jessie, meanwhile, seldom spent any time with her kids and returned home at night fatigued. She made a self-promise to perform better tomorrow and play with her children as she drifted off to sleep. Sadly, that didn't take place, so dealing with her unhappy client and the other customers made her day tougher and more challenging. She found it harder to be a waitress now than when she was younger, but at least she got nice tips. She'd been serving the elderly, cranky Mr. Norton for years, and the rest of the staff was impressed by how she handled him. She showed more patience and even picked up some information about his life. Most of the time he acted like a toddler while having a tantrum, but occasionally he would be nearly amicable and inquire about her life. Regardless of how often he grumbled, he consistently left a sizable 15% tip, so at least that was good. One day, though, there was no money on the table. He usually paid and left a few extra bucks. But on that particular day, Jesse discovered a key and a message. She understood why they were upset. I appreciate you putting up with this old grump for so long, Jesse. I'm leaving for a hospice facility right now, so I won't be coming back. This is the house key I have. It's yours. I'll leave my lawyer's card here so you can handle things legally. Farewell, my love. P.S. I didn't moan that my tea was overly sweet, see? My moment is near. She found it hard to believe. In order for her to get in touch with him, he left his key, his home's address, and his lawyer's business card. But it was not achievable. Why would he trust a total stranger with his home? Jessie thought to herself. I'm aware of his family. She therefore got in touch with the attorney to inquire about the hospice center so she could go there and acquire some information. While there, she noticed how pale and frail Mr. Norton had actually become. Although she hadn't paid him any attention at the meal, she was assured that the note was genuine by the elderly cranky man who read it aloud. But why? How old are your kids? Confused, Jessie questioned. My kids despise me. They haven't been seen or heard from in a very long time. For as long as I can remember, I was grumpy to everyone in my life. 
and you were the only one who ever treated me with a wide smile. Keep that home for your large family then. It's big. It's intended for individuals like you who have patience for older items. After hearing what Mr. Morton had said, she couldn't remember when she first began to like Mr. Norton's company, but the prospect of never seeing him again was unbearable, or perhaps she detested the fact that he was dying by himself. Therefore, when Jessie brought her kids to meet him that weekend, she saw the elderly guy smile for the first time in a long time. That was well worth 1,000 tips. A few weeks later, Mr. Norton passed away, leaving Jesse the legal owner of the property. His attorney claimed that because his relatives had no interest, she ultimately received the entirety of his assets. Apart from the lovely house, there wasn't much. Yet it was a major deal. The fact that her kids now had their own rooms and that Jesse and her husband had received job advancements meant that their financial condition had slightly improved. Her kids were thrilled. They had a lot to be grateful for. So in Mr. Norton's honor, they volunteered as frequently as they could at the neighborhood senior center. Also, Jessie was always watching the elderly people with the worst attitudes. They reminded her of the guy who had transformed her life, and she knew they were cranky for a reason. What can we learn from this story? Older people need as much patience as children. As a mother of five, Jessie was the only staff at the restaurant being nice was a way of paying off in a surprising ways. In another story, woman in a wheelchair is refused service at a restaurant. Staff, a customer in a wheelchair is mistreated by the personnel of a posh restaurant that discriminates against people with disabilities, and as a result, their reputation is ruined. The staff at the Silver Spoon, one of the priciest and most upscale eateries in the city, was impatiently anticipating a visit from the enigmatic Mr. Brook, a well-known restaurant critic. The proprietor had been informed that Brooke wanted to visit the establishment that day and have lunch while posing as a frequent patron in order to acquire a sense of what to expect on a regular basis. Everyone from the manager to the menial kitchen assistant knew the illustrious critic was coming and was all ready to make sure he had a wonderful day. The chef was determined to serve Brooke the tastiest meal she had ever experienced. The Silver Spoon would become the city's most popular restaurant if Brooke gave it a five-star rating. Nonetheless, many a prosperous establishment had gone into a downward spiral after receiving a negative evaluation from Brooke, eventually closing. Every detail was amazing. With cut crystal and polished silver glistening on the tables, soothing music was playing. The first patrons of the evening were already seated and savoring their wine at the Silver Spoon. They were listed among the beautiful people of the city. The manager observed with joy. A football player, two supporting actors, a top model, a hot young novelist, and a few well-off looking unknowns were among the celebrities she observed wearing designer labels. Certainly, the silver spoon was prepared to knock Mr. Brooks' socks off. It was totally the incorrect impression when a woman in a wheelchair appeared at the door at the same moment. She would ruin everything. The manager rushed over to the reception and gave the host a hushed order. He gave a quick nod before turning to meet the woman in the wheelchair. How may I help you, madam? Good evening. The attractive woman, who appeared to be in her mid-thirties and had lovely, exquisite features, grinned tenderly. Good night. I think I have a reservation for twenty hundred. Am I right, Madam White? The manager looked on disapprovingly as Mrs. White slid onto the chair. The presenter gave Mrs. White a thumbs-down expression. In addition to being dressed casually, she also had her slender, twisted legs exposed and a shabby blanket covering the rear of her wheelchair. The host thought that was a pretty awful sight. The supervisor was correct. Customers of the Silver Spoon needed to be shielded from unpleasantness. We're having a private function tonight. I'm sorry, lady. Lady White scowled, but I have a misgiving. Yesterday afternoon I called. Please make sure. The host gave Mrs. White a cold downward gaze. We have a personal gathering. There aren't any objections. I see, Mrs. White said. I'd prefer to speak with the manager in that instance. The manager promptly stood up and greeted Mrs. White formally after hearing out of sight. The manager is me. How can I be of service? Good evening, said Mrs. White. I wanted to look at your book as it is my right. 
Since your fellow here claims that I don't have a reservation, the customer said, the manager gave a slender smile before grabbing the reservation log. I'll check, but I have to let you know that this is a private event. But since you accepted my reservation, you must serve me, Mrs. White said. I have a reservation for 20 hundred hours under the name of White. The manager was furious, so she swiftly ran her finger through the reservations for the evening and saw White scheduled for 20 hundred. The manager chewed her lip while hastily thinking. She used her final card. Indeed, lady, but there is just one tiny issue. Lady White scowled. What could that possibly be? The manager looked down at Mrs. White's feet, which were wearing sneakers, and grinned triumphantly. Ladies must adhere to the dress code by donning formal shoes. Higher heels are preferred. Mrs. White's lips began to narrow as she gazed up at the manager. I see. The manager made an arrogant motion. You'll no doubt locate a restaurant that accepts walk-in customers. There are many restaurants in this neighborhood. Fortunately, when Mrs. White wheeled herself away, she came into contact with a woman wearing a stylish outfit and six-inch heels. Pardon me, the woman heard Mrs. White say. Immediately, I'll give you three times what you paid for those shoes. The woman gaped in shock as she looked at Mrs. White. These belong to Jimmy Chu. They set me back eight hundred dollars. Well then, you should be able to purchase yourself three pairs, Mrs. White said while holding out a large wad of cash. Despite her joyful smile, the woman said, What shall I wear, though? I can't go barefoot around here. Remove my brand new sneakers, Mrs. White commanded. After their exchange was complete, Mrs. White showed up to the silver spoon wearing a pair of sparkling Jimmy Choo's and was rebuffed entry. She was ill-mannered, escorted to her table by her waiter, who also threw the menu on the table. The manager looked on disapprovingly as Mrs. White slid onto the chair. Mrs. White skimmed the menu in a hurry. The specialties from the chef seemed delectable. I'm going to order the veal with chestnut puree, I guess. The waiter apologized sternly. No more veal is available. Oh, Mrs. White said as she once more scanned the menu. Bring me the Dover sole with the caviar mousse then, okay? There is none. She chewed her lips. Mrs. White, what about the duck served with wild rice and cranberry sauce? The waiter answered tersely, no. I see. When Mrs. White turned to look, she noticed the dish of another patron. I'll consume what the man is consuming there. What is that? Roast fowl in a port wine sauce with goose liver and walnut stuffing. Lady White grinned. It sounds wonderful, but I have a nut allergy. Can I get the food sans the nut? The waiter harshly retorted, impossible. You'll need to use a fork to remove the nuts yourself. Mrs. White's dinner was delivered in no time. Before Brooke came, the management was eager to get her out of there. The pianist in the restaurant then began to play. Mrs. White's table neighbors requested the waiter's assistance. Would he be willing to play a tango for you? We want to dance. The waiter grinned and bowed, saying, Of course, sir. A few minutes later, the passionate notes of a well-known tango filled the air, and the couple leaped to their feet ready to demonstrate their moves. In the small space between the tables, they began to move around and dance, bumping into Mrs. White's wheelchair. The man was indignant. What is this? Feeding a cripple knight? He shouted. These individuals believe they rule the world. Mrs. White summoned the manager over since she was obviously angry. I apologize, but this person... He angrily interrupted her and addressed the manager, saying, I was hoping for more of your establishment. This chair for the disabled got in the way when we wanted to dance. Even having to look at her is horrible enough, ruining my appetite. Mrs. White was shocked when the manager's response was, Sir, I'm so sorry. To make up for your mistake, your waiter will bring you a complimentary bottle of champagne. You're apologizing to him? Mrs. White said in shock. The supervisor turned to face Mrs. White. I'm afraid we'll have to move you to a better table, where you won't bother the other diners, the waiter said. Disturb? Mrs. White's ears couldn't be believed. She was wheeled over to the room most obscure area, where the server then brought her meal. Mrs. White practically disappeared as she ate her dinner with her back to the other customers. She eventually called the waiter over. Will you kindly tell me where the bathroom is? 
She caught his disdainful attention. The bathroom is not accessible, not for people of your kind. Your kind? What are you saying? Mrs. White's legs caught the waiter's stern attention. You understand, your sort. Mrs. White stood up, much to his surprise and shock. My style? Do you think I'm the appropriate kind now? The manager who was on guard lashed over. What? What's happening? Mrs. White said, what's going on? I believe you know exactly what's going on. So I'll let you in on a little secret. You'll soon be searching for a new position. The supervisor grinned. Well, no, lady, I don't think so. We anticipate receiving a glowing review from the city's most well-renowned critic. Is he? Meaning Brooke? The manager confidently answered, yeah, the renowned Mr. Brooke. Do you mean Mrs. Brooke White, I presume? The boss's expression darkened. Miss Brooke White? In case you didn't figure it out, that is indeed me. And trust me when I say that my review won't be positive. You see, I've gotten messages from people who are unhappy with the way you handle your clients who are impaired. I needed to be certain, and I am now. The stressed-out manager was left to handle the wheelchair after Brooke swiftly snapped a few pictures of the employees and the customers on her cell phone before leaving. The restaurant was soon forced to close after Brooke's scathing review of the Silver Spoon was published the next day on her blog, which boasted over 6 million subscribers. Along with the tale of how she had been treated at the restaurant, Brooke provided photographs of the tangoing couple and the staff. The bigot's reputation was destroyed by the vicious outcry on social media.